Hello guys, so in this video, I'm going to share with you the best prompts that I use on ChatGPT to practice languages. This video will be particularly useful to you if you're new to ChatGPT. I'm going to assume that you've heard about ChatGPT before. If you haven't, I will put a video in the description box below. I'm gonna use Japanese as an example throughout this video, but I'll make sure that all my tips, advice, prompts, etc. apply to all languages and every level. Also, I will try to include some screen recordings or screenshots of uh, me using ChatGPT, so it's a little bit easier to understand. All right, let's jump right in. Number one, using ChatGPT as a pen pal. The prompt that I use in this specific exercise or activity is uh, the following one, which I will give as an example. So, can we have a conversation in Japanese using N4 level grammar and vocabulary? And correct my mistakes if I make any. I've tried this prompt a few times in preparation for this video, and the responses are always different. Sometimes it will just come up with a question spontaneously, like, what did you do recently? Or sometimes it will ask me to ask a question, but it's always different, so it's unlikely you will find this exercise too repetitive too quickly. But regardless of how it responds, you can always tune the prompts. For example, when it asked me uh, to ask uh, a question first, uh, I just said, no, you ask a question first. Another time, I was not interested in the topic that ChatGPT came up with, so I just asked it uh, to change, or I just asked for a specific topic. Basically, remember that you're the boss <laughs> and you call the shots. It may seem annoying sometimes to have to calibrate uh, the prompts, but if you think about it, doing it in your target language is language practice. But of course, if you're not very comfortable in your target language, you can use English or whatever your native language is. You'll see that over time, you'll get better and better at giving the right prompts, uh, asking exactly what you want without having to tune all the time. So anyway, so back to the original prompt, uh, sometimes it was a little bit too hard for me. For example, the kanji or the Japanese characters were a little bit too difficult for me or I didn't know them or sometimes the grammar, I was not very familiar with it or I had forgotten it because I'm kind of trying to refresh on my Japanese at the moment. But when it's too hard, instead of completely freaking out or feeling overwhelmed, I do the following. A, after I've had a couple of conversations and responses with uh, ChatGPT during a uh, conversation session, I copy and paste in the document uh, some of the responses that I found difficult, just to keep them somewhere safe and avoid losing them by mistake. B, I take note of two or three grammar concepts or a few words that I wasn't really familiar with or that I didn't know at all or that I need to uh, revise, etc. C, I learn or I review them. D, I go back to the document where I saved the responses and I notice how much I've improved because I've done revision and I've acquired new uh, bits of language. And finally, E, I carry on with the conversation on ChatGPT or I start a new one. It doesn't matter whether you carry on the conversation or start a new one because the point is to encounter new uh, concepts, new grammar concepts or new words of vocab because um, then you will repeat the steps I've just outlined and then your language skills will improve. Some word of advice, I guess, is to avoid working at a level that's much higher than your current one. While it's important to have some difficulty, if it's too difficult, too much of the text will be unknown to you or not understandable by you. Uh, so it's going to be a bit too tedious uh, because even if you review two or three grammar points or words of vocab, um, you will still have a lot that you don't know. I mean, give it a go, for sure, but usually it's better to work at your level. So for Japanese, you will use N4, N5, N3, N2 levels, etc. For other languages, it might be A1, A2, B1, B2. For Chinese, it will be HSK, 1, 2, 3, etc., etc. So try to figure out kind of what, at what level you're working at and then go from there. If you don't know, just, you know, choose any level. And then if it's too difficult, then ask ChatGPT to make it easier. If it's too easy, ask it to make it harder. The second point I wanted to talk about is generating stories. If you're not a big fan of conversations, you can also ask ChatGPT to write a story for you. But in my opinion, for this activity, you need to be quite specific with your prompts. You can give it a go, but if you just ask ChatGPT to write a story uh, in X language, um, it will just give you something super random, any level, any topic, anything really. It will just, it will just be super random which is fine, obviously, if that's what you want, but in many cases, you will want something a bit more specific than that. 
For example, you want to be more familiar with a topic because you're studying for an exam. So you can ask ChatGPT to write a story about traveling, about economy, about science, about, uh, I don't know, linguistics, biology, you name it. If that is the case, you just need to specify it in your prompt. For example, write a story in, let's say, Japanese about traveling at uh, N4 level, being beginner level, essentially or write a story in French about uh, transportation at a C1 level. But obviously, you can make your prompts more detailed with the following suggestions. So to the basic prompt of write a story in X language about X topic in X level, you can also say, make it funny, make it scary, make it a sci-fi story, make it a thriller, etc., etc. You can ask for a story that includes a specific grammar concept. For example, if in French or Spanish or Portuguese you struggle with the subjunctive, ask ChatGPT to include lots of examples of subjunctives. That will allow you to see this grammar concept in context. Obviously, choose any grammar you want. Um, that, that was just an example. You can ask ChatGPT to write a fake news article. I literally tried in English to ask ChatGPT to write a story about a dog that wanted to become human. <laughs> that was super silly, quite funny, um, but that can be interesting. But that's a good way to use your imagination to create something absolutely nonsensical. But the funny thing is that ChatGPT will write it as if it's a genuine article. <laughs> You can ask ChatGPT to um, write a dialogue between two characters. You can give your characters names, a specific personality. You can say uh, that they're arguing over uh, money, over holiday plans, or they are just discussing um, what they're going to do the next day. Whatever. You can literally just set any situational context that you want. Remember, you're the boss. <laughs> Finally, you can decide to uh, save the uh, story or news article or whatever that you will obtain and follow the steps that I outlined in the previous point. You know, write it down, grammar concepts that you don't know, words of vocab, going back to the text, doing it again, etc, etc, until you understand the text fully or almost fully. That's a nice way to see progress because you will have a text that you didn't understand fully before and then after some work, you will realize that you understand it. That's quite a great achievement, I think. Number three, turn ChatGPT into a teacher. Obviously, as a former teacher myself, I wouldn't say that ChatGPT can completely replace a teacher. Also, I don't want to anger any teachers that might be watching this video. <laughs> However, ChatGPT can get pretty close to a real-life teacher. You can, for example, ask ChatGPT to explain a specific grammar point, break down the structure of a sentence, or explain its meaning, ask the difference between two words that are similar, like synonyms, typically. You can send ChatGPT a text that you've written and ask it to correct it for you. You can even act out a conversation with a ChatGPT. I remember the other day on Reddit, I saw someone, I can't remember where it was, I wish I could uh, find it, but it was someone asking ChatGPT to have a conversation like if they were on Tinder, and then the, the person asked ChatGPT to pretend the person is very interested in dating, or it's uninterested, or it's rude, or it's uh, extremely enthusiastic, I don't know, whatever. So you can give it a uh, different sort of personalities, I guess, or moods. And I think that's quite funny, but I mean, practicing for Tinder is language practice, so why not? <laughs> I still have a couple of things I want to cover in this video, but something I wanted to specify is that ChatGPT is not perfect. It's not going to replace a native speaker or a teacher, um, because I've heard of uh, sometimes ChatGPT making mistakes. I don't think it's too worrying, because even if you learn one or two things that are false, all the good things that you can learn uh, from ChatGPT kind of outweigh the bad, in a, in a sense. But if you are in doubt, don't hesitate to ask a native speaker. Okay, so for the last part of this video, I wanted to go on Twitter for a second because I asked a lot of you in the language community how you use ChatGPT and some of the suggestions were amazing, so I wanted to share them in the video. If you want to read the full thread, I will put it in the description box below, um, but I will share with you a couple of ones that I liked. So for example, and I will definitely mispronounce that, I'm sorry, uh, Zolbo uh, Narambata uh, said that he uses uh, ChatGPT to translate lyrics of Spanish songs that he likes, and I think that's a really good idea. Uh, Piotr uh, Kolibabski uh, said that he generates example sentences for grammar points or using, I suppose, words that he wants to learn and see in context, uh, and I think that's also an amazing way of using ChatGPT. 
He also suggests to summarize difficult text. And I have to say, I would not have thought about doing that, but that's a great way as well to use ChatGPT. The last one I wanted to share is uh, from Simple Spanish, and he uses ChatGPT to generate vocab lists. Why not? If you want to learn vocab related to traveling, cooking, etc., uh, creating a um, vocab list, and you can decide, uh, you can ask ChatGPT how many words you want in that list, 10, 20, 30, 50, 100, whatever. Um, that's great, that's a good idea. All right, so that was a long video, but I hope it was full of useful information. And don't hesitate to also share with us in the comment section how you use ChatGPT. Is there anything I haven't mentioned in the video? Are there any suggestions of prompts that you would recommend to other people? Please let me know. Of course, as usual, don't forget to like this video, um, share it, uh, subscribe to the channel because that's the best way to support me. And I will see you in a future video. Bye. <laughs>